Good morning to everyone. I am Francesca Nocca, an architect and researcher in evaluation field at the University of Naples Federico II in Italy. Before going with my talk, I would like to show you a short video about the precious resources that Italy has. country that has the most important cultural heritage in the world in terms of quantity and the highest number of sites recognized by UNESCO. But we are not able to manage, preserve, enhance and promote all heritage. Not enough resources are invested in cultural heritage and as a result our country is progressively losing one of the most precious resources that it has. As shown in this table, today we are live in an increasingly urbanized world. As the world continues to urbanize, sustainable development challenges will be increasingly concentrated in cities. For this reason, the city's organizational structure is being increasingly questioned because it produces economic wealth but at the same time consumes ecological and social wealth. In this period of growing urbanization and which cities are generators of entropy, the informational debate around sustainable development and the paradigm shift towards the general goal of humanization of our cities proposed by United Nations in the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development and the New Urban Agenda is very, very rarely felt. Habitat Tree Conference represented a great opportunity to discuss the role of cities in sustainable development and how they need to be planned and managed for becoming drivers in this process and also to become more inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. So, the new urban agenda, the outcome document of the Habitat Tree Conference, represents the extension of the Agenda 2030 principles in the space of the city. So, the question that we are posing is how and to what extent and which conditions cultural heritage and the landscape can play a role in sustainable development. 
So to date, there are many discussions about the role of a cultural heritage in sustainable development, but they mainly deal with this topic very often on theoretical level, or they are mainly focused on economic impacts, often neglecting the other pillars of sustainability. In the Sustainable Development Goals, identified in the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, cultural heritage is explicitly mentioned in the Target 11.4 that deals only with the protection and the safeguard of cultural heritage without any reference to its valorization and regeneration. The new urban agenda also recognizes in many points cultural heritage as an important factor for urban sustainable development. So, how can we pass from principle to action? The answer to this question can be positive only if we are able to produce empirical evidence about the contribution of this treasure, that is the tangible and tangible cultural heritage, to the economic, social and environmental productivity of cities. It is necessary to produce empirical evidence to demonstrate that the cultural heritage and the landscape conservation valorization is an investment and not a cost. It needs to demonstrate the multidimensional impacts, economic impacts, but also social, environmental, cultural, symbolic and spiritual ones on investments in cultural heritage in order to convince about its capacity to contribute to increase the overall local productivity, to improve well-being of inhabitants and to attract funding from the public, private and the private social sectors. In order to identify the multidimensional impacts that the cultural heritage conservation and the regeneration can have on city productivity, I analyzed 40 case studies of cultural heritage conservation and the regeneration projects. I deduced a set of indicators identifying the multidimensionality of these impacts, highlighting impacts on cultural heritage but also from cultural heritage, that is the impacts or, and benefits that it is able to produce on city productivity. Each case study has been identified and analyzed starting from scientific papers and reports to gather data and information. They are mainly selected on the base of the data availability, case studies with the greatest number of data, and summarizing a sheet about impact indicators has been elaborated for each of them. I divided them into nine impact categories and related subcategories that compose a comprehensive matrix for impact assessment. Tourism and recreation, creative cultural and innovative activities, typical local productions, environment and natural capital, social capital cohesion and inclusion, real estate, financial return, well-being and the cultural value of properties and landscape. They are categories and subcategories of the indicators emerged from case studies. Now, before showing you the related indicators, I would like to show you the frequency analysis and the related critical analysis about the categories and subcategories. Which emerges from case studies analysis. This analysis surely highlights the multidimensionality of impacts that the cultural heritage conservation and regeneration is able to produce on city productivity. But some issues arise. It is emerged that cultural heritage conservation and regeneration is often interpreted in touristic and real estate terms. In fact, these impacts categories have a great number of indicators in all case studies. The indicators of these first two categories frequently recur because the related impacts are more immediate and clearer, particularly in the short term. 
There is also a great number of indicators in creative, cultural and innovative activities and the social capital cohesion and inclusion categories. The reason why there are a lot of indicators also related to creative, cultural and innovative category is that many of the 40 analyzed case studies have been European capital of culture. The most frequent indicators in the analyzed case studies are those referred to the number of visitors and tourists, the number of participants in cultural events, the average rent values for residential properties, and the number of new jobs. This is because those indicators are related to aspects for which information are more easily accessible, not only from official data, but also, for example, from big data in a dynamic way, or they are related to benefits that are more immediate in the short terms. Furthermore, the indicators related to the social capital cohesion and inclusion category are mainly referred to the employment subcategory. More indicators able to assess the glue value of a cultural heritage in social cohesion terms, not only at a theoretical level, are very required. The categories whose indicators are less frequent in the case studies are typical local production, well-being and environment and the natural capital. The impacts about the well-being and environmental categories are very poorly considered. They are the categories whose indicators are less frequent in the case studies. This denotes a lacking of awareness about the real benefits that investments in cultural-led projects are able to produce to the, on the environmental system, thus contributing to the climate change challenge and for well-being of inhabitants. Although well-being represents a fundamental dimension to express the nature of sustainability and, and it can be recognized as the ultimate goal of sustainable development, it really emerges from the case studies that I have analyzed. It confirms that although well-being is increasingly assuming a central role in this period characterized by a substantial and considerable unsustainability, the evaluation about the relationship between the variation in well-being and the variation in spatial landscape quality resulting from conservation projects is very, very still lacking. So now I would like to show you some comments about the individual category of indicators that emerged from case studies. The first one is about tourism and recreational activities. And as I said before, the tourism category is one with the most indicators. This activity has become a pillar of economy, a passport to prosperity. Tourism and cultural tourism is a sector able to transform cultural values into the economic ones. It produces new employment and new wealth in the short time. Here, all indicators about this category emerged from case studies. Tourism is uh, referred in particular to the instrumental value of cultural heritage, but the latter has also an intrinsic value and a social value to consider, and all these values are able to increase directly or indirectly the comprehensive city productivity. The tourism sector alone is no guarantee of a preservation and a development of a cultural heritage. The development of tourism in urban areas can have some negative impacts as the potential congestion of public spaces and infrastructures, inflationary processes both in commercial services as shops or restaurants or even cultural venues, and also in the real estate market. Touristification, that is, changes in urban forms and functions due to the growth of tourism. 
degradation of a landscape, unplanned tourism and unwell managed visitors access can represent a dangerous threat to the integrity and the authenticity of the heritage. Overutilization of the functional component can cause degradation of the intrinsic value of the heritage, which leads to the degradation of the use value over time. So the degradation of a landscape becomes a social, economic and cultural cause for the community. Another negative impact is the gentrification phenomenon, making local residents or users forced to move to peripheral areas of the city. In fact, in some case studies, the increasing number of tourists is strictly related to a decrease of rent. Investment should not have as their main goal the, the increasing number of tourists, but the improvement of residents' life conditions. That in turn, in a circular vision, is a source of tourist attraction. So, we can affirm that life, quality and tourist attractiveness are in a symbiotic and a circular relationship. Furthermore, the net benefits produced by tourism can be much less if we consider costs as environmental costs. There is a double relationship between tourism sector and climate change. The tourism sector is contemporaneously both a vector and a victim of climate change. But cultural heritage and cultural tourism are vulnerable to climate change. For example, coastal tourism, that represents the largest segment of the sector, is affected by sea level rise, beach erosion and other consequences of climate change. Climate change represents a threat to cultural heritage, both to its integrity, authenticity, outstanding universal values and to its enjoyment. So climate change affects cultural heritage and consequently has negative impacts on tourism sector because of the reduction of attractiveness of destinations. They are the indicators emerged for the environment and the natural capital category. The World Bank recognized the investment in cultural heritage as a good solution to reduce carbon dioxide and climate change. Many of the benefits related to this category are indirect, so they are expressed in terms of avoided costs, for example, a reduction of energy consumption, waste reduction, and so on. The reduction of costs related, for example, to natural hazards disaster can represent a significant indicator in this category. Therefore, economic indicators related to this category can be expressed as money saved rather than money gained as for the other categories, as for example, property values and earning. Environmental benefits can be also referred to assessment of land saving use due to building reuse rather than demolished, and the reduction in carbon dioxide emissions thanks to restoration of a building rather than rebuilding it. They are indicators about the cultural value of properties and the landscape category. Cultural heritage is an integral part of the life of communities and it is involved in social, economic and environmental processes. It is an expression of a cultural identity and a religious belief of societies. So if we are able to conserve cultural heritage, we can construct memory of ourselves and therefore we are able to conserve identity in the current globalization changes. We can react to the risk of losing our identity as a result of globalization through cultural heritage. And at the same time, we fix memory through cultural heritage that has been handed down, passing it in turn on future generations. A place that keeps intact as much as possible its historical and cultural assets and values is able to attract at the same time the permanence of the residents, the resident population, to strengthen the sense of belonging of citizens and to increase civic and individual attention to the safeguarding. In this perspective, indicators related to the state of conservation of cultural heritage and enhancement of a local community have to be considered.
Cultural heritage is able to build social capital and to contribute to social cohesion, providing a framework for participation and engagement and also fostering integration. It is, a fundamental, it is fundamental for community social cohesion as it expresses values and identity and organizes communities and their relationships through its powerful symbolic and aesthetic dimensions. Cultural heritage has a positive impact on social capital, revitalizing synergies, bonds, and collaborative relationships. It is able to encourage association and crowdfunding projects that, for example, that contribute to local economic productivity. Indicators related to the number of crowdfunding projects, the number of participants in crowdfunding initiatives, amount of donations for cultural heritage and municipal bonds crowdfunding incomes for heritage projects can be significant indicators for giving empirical evidence about the social cohesion benefits produced by cultural heritage. Local production, craft and traditional products as a part of cultural heritage is able to enhance local community too. Local specialities representing local identity are able to impart values of the communities, considering the strong link, link between the product and its place of origin. Companies, in particular smaller size ones, see in the typical products a chance to find a new competitive space against increasingly competitive markets by price. Despite they usually are small sites, firms that locally sell typical local products may boost economic growth in the, in the city. And at the same time, local governments are interested in local production seeing it as a means to strengthen identity and social cohesion, stimul stimulating synergies and bonds. Local resources, both tangible and intangible ones, can represent magnets for tourist flows. For example, craft products of gastronomy or gastronomy can be a motivational and a promotive factor of business in the territory and for demand of tourism. They can be the engine of local economy and at the same time they can represent expression of local culture. So the typical, uh, the typical products as a form of expression of a local culture have impacts on social and economic development of a territory, producing benefits such as increasing income of small producers, enhancing identity, increasing in social vitality, uh, regeneration of traditional activities, new jobs, and so on. Despite the few number of indicators emerged from case studies, some indicators are related to local production, as, as for example the selling price of traditional products, annual growth rate of traditional production, net present value of economic activity, and the internal profit rate of economic activity can be significant indicators for aligning the benefits produced in this category. Furthermore, the implementation of the circular economy model in the local production chain implies to close the loops, contributing so to achieve sustainable development by reducing negative impacts on environmental system and improving at the same time the economic dimension. In fact, starting from a geography proximity, closing the loops allows reducing waste, energy consumption, and so on. Another category is about the real estate. Real estate is positively influenced by investments in cultural heritage. The project areas and the surrounding areas are usually revealed an increase in real estate value. But increase in real estate value could have also negative impacts, such as a gentrification phenomenon. Local community and young people can no longer afford to buy rent apartments because of rising prices. Therefore, as emerged from some case studies, many apartments remain unused for many years and the owners do not care about the maintenance causing the deterioration of them. 
the increase in property value also can produce a touch and go tourism because of the high prices to stay in the area object of intervention. Social and the cultural components need to be considered in regeneration of strategies and policies in order to limit these negative impacts. The real estate benefits are direct benefits for owners and at the same time they turn into tax revenue for public bodies. In fact, investments in cultural heritage are able to generate financial returns stimulating real economic growth. They are able to generate tax revenue for public authorities both directly and indirectly. The direct one is referred to heritage-related activities. The indirect one is related to spillover from heritage-related projects and programs leading to further investments. Public financial benefits can be expressed in terms of increasing taxes due to commercial and residential development and tourist flow. As, for example, receipts from tourist tax, increasing taxes related to real estate taxes, property taxes gained from commercial development, and so on. To avoid the expenditure from management and the maintenance of cultural heritage due to the increase in private investments. And also to new activities and businesses started up thanks to cultural heritage regeneration. Mere economic indicators, as those referred to the financial category, leave out many aspects that are not economically evaluable. They are able to evaluate the economic growth, but they are, do not represent people well-being and, and the level of the life quality. It needs to go beyond the mere economic numbers that need to be put necessarily in relationship to other indicators, able so to capture the multidimensionality of the integrated conservation. So this is the indicators about the well-being category. Well-being is a multidimensional concept that changes in a spatial and temporal dimension. It changes in time, place and the culture. Despite of the health dimension, principally associated to the medicine and having always the same parameters, in order to define the well-being dimension, it is important to understand the context in which people live. In the common belief, well-being is associated to a good quality of life. It's surely a true assumption, but the quality of life is not only the only indicators of well-being. It is associated with a comfortable, healthy, happy life, and the life quality affects this state. So life satisfaction is another of, the, of different indicators used in combination with others to assess the well-being. Cultural heritage contributes to better urban life in different ways, for example, providing options for housing through reuse to improve public spaces, and so on. Data demonstrate that engaging with the culture, visiting, attending, and participation significantly increases overall life satisfaction. But there is no much empirical evidence about the contribution of a cultural heritage to the achievement of well-being. The indicators proposed by the Italian National Institute of Statistics in the Equitable and Sustainable Well-Being Report can represent a, st a step forward. In this report, the factors, economic, social, and environmental factors contributing to the quality of life are identified and analyzed. Among the identified 12 dimensions and 130 indicators of well-being, there is one of them explicitly referred to landscape and the cultural heritage. It can be considered an effective tool to promote well-being, aiming at the integration of traditional economic indicators with indicators related to the quality of life that consider equity and sustainability issues, able to give a more complete point of view about the society development.
So it is important to understand that the impacts produced by cultural heritage conservation and regeneration do not end in tourism and the real estate sector, but as emerging from the analyzed case studies, they are multidimensional impacts. That is from ec economy to ecology to culture to social needs and to well-being. From the analysis emerged that not enough attention is focused on the agenda of 2030, even though cultural heritage is the potential to contribute to the achievement of most of the goals. In fact, the emerged indicators are mainly referred to the economic dimension, focusing less attention on the benefits that the cultural heritage is able to produce to the other pillar of sustainability, that is the social and environmental dimension. In this perspective, it is important to understand not only how much development is produced, but how much this development is sustainable, because we have to understand what are the net benefits. In fact, for example, the net benefits produced by tourism can be much less if we consider costs, both direct and indirect costs. For example, considering the environmental and the, so, uh, the, and the social negative impacts. The above analysis have highlighted the multidimensional impacts that the cultural heritage conservation and regeneration projects have on city productivity. Nevertheless, the need to balance the needs of transformation and development of the territory with the preservation of historical and cultural values poses very important challenges. The overcoming of these difficulties lies in the construction of evaluation tools suitable for the management of transformations in context of historical, cultural and landscape value. This is in line with the historic urban landscape approach proposed by UNESCO that represents an example of integration between cultural heritage, active conservation and development. Historic urban landscape focuses attention both on tangible and tangible values of cultural heritage. So we need to consider the social complex value of cultural heritage. That is both the use values, that is the economic values, and also the intrinsic value as the Barra Charter introduced. But the question is, in which way we can operationalize historic urban landscape approach? The historic urban landscape approach implementation to manage the change is possible in the circular economy perspective. That is, the economy is inspired to the processes of natural ecosystems as a tool for achieving and implementing sustainable development. In fact, the circular economy is able to conserve cultural heritage and at the same time to produce economic wealth linking past, present and future. Both the circular economy and the conservation of a cultural heritage have the goal of extending the life of resources over time as long as possible. So, maintenance, reuse, restoration, rehabilitation, but also valorization and regeneration are key words, and they can be improved through circular processes. The circular economy allows conserving the use value of our heritage through the regeneration of our resources and also the intrinsic value of our cultural heritage. In fact, it allows conserving a live symbol of a community identity that is a cultural benefits and also increasing economic productivity that represents economic benefits, reducing the resource consumption that is environmental benefits and also producing social benefits, for, ex for example, employment, inclusion, and so on. The regeneration of abandoned and underused cultural heritage realizes operationally the circular economy. For example, reduce land consumption. It contributes to reduction of materials used, reducing the need of new land and buildings. 
Reuse and share the use of existing goods with the new functions. Maintenance of existing goods, building or cultural landscape, ensuring longer life and energy recovery. Valorizing the embodied energy and using renewable energy resources. In this sense, some indicators emerged from analyzed case studies can be interpreted in this perspective. For example, the number of restoration and adaptation works undertaken on historic buildings and sites, percentage of refunctionalized historic buildings, and the area of facades of historic buildings rehabilitated. So, these indicators could be interpreted in the circular economy perspective by extending the lifetime of resources over time. The considerable absence in case studies of indicators explicitly referred to the circular economy shows the wide gap between the model of the circular economy to be interpreted not only referred to the waste management but also to the overall city organization and its operationalization in reference to the discipline linked to cultural heritage conservation and regeneration. Despite the restorative and regenerative nature of the circular economy and that these concepts dates back to the 1960s with Bolding. So, in a systemic perspective, we need to take into account all values, that is also the intrinsic value of cultural heritage. The management of a change has to guarantee continuity, that is, uh, consistency with the past, the identity and the memory. So, it is necessary to identify the limits, that is the threshold within which the change is admissible. We need appropriate tools, that is financial, business and evaluation tools, to include the cultural heritage in strategies for sustainable development of cities. So, we need tools to evaluate the contribution of cultural heritage to the achievement of sustainable development, considering the multidimensional impacts that is able to produce as emerged from the analysis of case studies and the identification of, of new effective models for sustainable management of cultural heritage. So we need an integrated approach to evaluate the identified multidimensional indicators. This approach has to integrate the assessment of integrity and authenticity of a cultural heritage with the assessment of the multidimensional benefits produced by conservation and valorization projects, taking into account all stakeholders' categories. This represents only a starting po point for identifying new evaluation tools able to evaluate the multidimensional impacts of a cultural heritage conservation and valorization. A challenge is to identify tools for evaluating the relationship between cultural heritage and the well-being of inhabitants. So, in conclusion, evaluation methods and indicators to assess the contribution of a cultural heritage to increase city multidimensional productivity still represent a gap and so an open field of research. Well, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.